capacity to able to empower other people. You know, and the goal is for us to have a shoemaking university where we would render five year course, six year course. And as I speak to you right now, I'm working hard on a big proposal as regards setting up where to make leather, leather tannery. We have it in Kano, and I found out that a lot of the people that run the leather tannery in Nigeria are foreigners. I was first, I got a big job from Zenit Bank last year, and I could not afford to travel to Italy to buy leather. So I was forced to go to Kano reluctantly. And I got the value I get in Italy in Kano because I was able to pay for it from Lebanese and Spanish guys. And they told me to my face, you guys are the problem of your country. You do not appreciate what you guys are. And which is the truth. Our good skin, Okufi, is the best in the world. Is the best. In, I've been in Milan once for a leather expo where um, an Indian saw me because I was more like the only person black skin at that expo. The man saw me and said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Nigeria, West Africa. He said, come, come, come to my stand. I will give you quality goat skin from Kano. I was embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so as I speak to you right now, we're working on a project. We're talking to um, some Eastern, uh, Eastern European investors to see how we can set up a tannery in the Southwest. It has costed me a lot of money. It has costed me sleepless nights. You know, uh, I spoke with Princess yesterday, who is one, actually one of the reasons why I've not been sleeping. I've been doing a lot of research in Nigeria to see how we can make this investment viable. The truth about the matter is this. The reason why we need to work hard is so that our businesses will live after us. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, th thank you for this opportunity to in your midst, I, I feel privileged uh, as well. My name is Humphrey, Humphrey Medina. Uh, actually, let me talk a little bit about my background. I studied geology and mining. I'm one of those people that uh, read their courses for their parents. I was, I was induced, while I was supposed to serve uh, doing my IT, my third year IT in school, I couldn't get a placement place, so I went into business. I was doing marketing for a Chinese company, you know, so, after graduating from school, you know, trying to align with what I love to do, okay, I've been just passion, passion, passion right from school. You know, I, I went to Federal University of Technology over there. You know, then it's a small school. If you wear designers' outfits, everybody will come, come and see, go straight to the practical aspect. You know, because there's something that happens to uh, events like this, okay, you. We all get motivated, you know, we just get so motivated, we write a lot, but when we get out here, you know, the reality on the streets will hit us. The reality of entrepreneurship, the core toughness of entrepreneurship in this fair, you know, in this environment will hit you and you will begin to rethink, ah, what was it that happened to me there that is not happening to me right now, okay? So I just want to pick out some little, little practical things because the caption is what next, entrepreneurship, what next? post-COVID-19. So I just want to share a little bit of what I do. Okay, I I call myself a fashion entrepreneur, you know, because here when you say fashion designer, everybody that does anything fashion is a fashion designer. About price. So people were looking for um, price sensitive. People came price sensitive. Is it cheap? Is it expensive? Some people wanted to be on the expensive um, end of the spectrum, and some people wanted to be on the cheap end of the spectrum. So, and that gave birth to branding. So, at some point, it was about the brand you were wearing. So, people asked, oh, is it good? It's about you. Business success is not going to be about the product. I mean, you just gave us an example of Auntie Ellie. Auntie Ellie can sew, like we say, she can sew for Africa. But, she has not left the shop. She has not expanded because now business success is about you and your personal values. So if we're talking about business resonance, we have to talk about your individual resonance. Now there's so many people that froze during the COVID. They just froze. They didn't know what to do. But some of them are still yet to freeze. And that's the reality. But they are going to make many things that are going to come that will push you into such a situation. So how resilient are you? So today, 
I want to challenge us to become resilient, to have that ability to bounce back. Shitsby was talking about how he lost all he had made, but resilience brought him back. Ability to bounce back. And that is very essential today. In fact, I think I can say it's more essential than the skills you acquire to do your business. So quickly, I'll just mention five skills you need to be resident. The first one is self-awareness. So Percy said something, he said, man, know thyself. It's profound. Know yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? How do you function? What are your preferences? I know some tailors that do not cut, they do not, they do not cut fabric anytime after morning. They wake up in the morning. Everything they are going to do, they will cut in the morning because that's when they are fresh. That's when they are productive. So you need to know, study yourself and know yourself. When are you productive? When are you creative? There's a difference between productivity and creativity. Some people are creative in the night. It's when it's night, the ideas will just be flowing. But only the day, it's like the sun does not agree well with them. So somehow, their, their, their creativity is shut down. So you need to study yourself to know who you are. What works for you? When are you creative? When are you energetic enough to do a lot of sewing? When are you energetic enough to do the things you need to do? So it's about knowing yourself. Self-awareness is so, so important for you as the business person. You need to know what your triggers are. Because some people don't actually want to be mean. They don't want to be rude to, to um, a customer. But because they don't know their triggers, they lose their temper before they can catch themselves. So you need to study yourself and know your triggers. And when you do that, you'll be in better control. Once you're getting angry, you need to know that. Hmm, it's like I'm beginning to get angry. Game out of that loss. And I tell you, for every loss, if you can see a gain in that loss, believe me, your life will already remain the same. A friend of mine lost the business and killed himself. He lost uh, the cocoa business, borrowed about 420 million naira from banks. Is there any low? So it was looking like cost. So he now said, when somebody tell you that oh shiri, what does it mean? He said it means that you are running mad or you are. He now said, do you know that is not an insult? That is a state of existence. That when you are broke or you are poor, it's equivalent to being shiri. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Pastor. Pastor Edward, thank you. You really inspired us. You really inspired us. a day to the event. So she called the camera guy, the guy came in with shorts, he wore a t-shirt, he wore slippers and a head warmer. So the guy came in. She have seen the guy before. She just asked him, are you part of this? He said yes. In this place, he said yes. What's your function? He said photographer. He said I don't want you again. So I was beginning to look like, what did, what's the offense? He said, look at you, dress as if you want to sell gala in traffic. Okay, so it's now, and the guy was speaking good English. So it's not about the English, it was the outfit. So that means in every money I made, I have to remove money for clothes. Money for. I'm grateful to PMM once again at a time like this. When I started, I want to say a big thank you to WDC. Ah, I said, Gideon, thank you very much. You remember saying that. I will not forget where I started from. I started from WDC. I was a graduate of the University of Lagos. I studied this at me. Going to the WDC, Mommy, after I learned blessed memory accident. What brought you here? I'm like, Mommy, let me learn so that I'll have something to give back to the society at the end of the day. There is no work anywhere. But aside this, let me do something for a living. I started, and now opportunity gave birth to PMF. My father, Mr. Deliba, and my lecturer called me based on relationship. Please don't forget it. Relationship matters a lot. I would just greet them. I would call them, Mommy, Shabafi Alewa. Asking after their well-being, and they just called me. 
Come here, you are 2016 set. You are the governor of your set. This is 2017. Come. Come and do this program. I believe in you, you can do it. And I did it. Glory to God, I was given a machine. I had one plus one, making two. I said, thank you, Jesus. What forward to sometimes in my life, I was married then. Something happened. And everything left me. Husband left. Everything left me. I was back to ground zero. At that time, thank God for consistency in this business. Should we say something someday? He said, when he lost his father and the mother, that was in year 2017, during our set. Pastor Isua was there. Pastor Isua said, what you have been given today, go and make something beautiful out of it. Such so things said, when he lost his uh, both parents, he was like, it seems that the world wanted to crash. But he remembered that the person does not have money to bury his parents, always cry. But he had money to bury his parents, but he still felt something was still missing. He just gathered himself, what? My daughter, that was his sister. I remember very well, like yesterday, when everything happened to me and I lost virtually everything, I was back to ground zero. The rent, the house was taken away. Everything in the house was taken away by the man. And his family, I was like, alone in the February. As of that time, I had already counted, I sent two machines. I had already started sewing, but I bought industrial, two industrial. By God's grace, when I left there, this is two years counting. I now have three industrials, five black eggs. And I'm still sewing, by His grace. No help, no money anywhere, but God. The machines you are giving today, don't put it under your bed, use it. Don't sell it. Someday it will pay off. As at that time, I have a husband that was paying for me. He was working, he's okay. I was comfortable. I have a car I was using. But someday everything went. And I was back to no food, no money. So what I was doing, I was using to keep my life together and at the same time pushing forward. But today, at least I have a roof over my head. And I'm still working. And I don't look like the problem of country in life. The pastor said they have lost some things. But don't dwell there. On an uh, English outfit, because this is what I do. I only make something like this. Shed and uh body uh, shoot. That's what we call it. So I was given a scholarship in Yaba College of Technology as well because I spoke with my peer that he actually called me to go and do supervise. So I said, sir, I don't want to supervise. I don't want to supervise. I also want to put in for this. I remember really my pastor said something to us that you can work for organizations, you can work in a private sector, you can work for federal government. Look inward. Be creative. In fact, when um, a fashion um, man was talking, I, I was like, I. It, it, it was just you know, pouring out my heart. The other dress that I released came, <laughs> I don't want to call it an accident actually. I had a fabric that was not enough even for me to make a dress for myself. And the first thing that came to my mind was like, I can actually combine another fabric. I had something in mind that I can make it a yoke design. How can I go about it? And I got another fabric combine it together. And that was the oral dress came up. Came up. And that was like came up with it. And when he was sharing about Can we move to the sewing machine please? My guest, please. Let's see and let's bless it for them.
My name is Haikore Ulua. Ulua. I feel great. It's 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 okay. What they have done for me, I'm fine. Something I cannot hide. I have to say a big thanks to them because they're good in their service. Uplift my spirit that I will give back to the society the same way they've done. It's great. Go forward. Challenge us also to even make things ahead and also to like win souls, empower other youths, and also to like. I think to me, it was really, really a lesson. And also to like, just empower youth, bless souls, and stand ends to the less privileged. Also. How can I be strong? But you know, with each passing day, when you wake up and you still see that you're breathing, that is life. You just try to move with the flow. Wake up every day, thank God. Celebrate your son. I don't know, some people might have a different feeling about you celebrating your son. What else will you have a parent do? The son that I have, and that everybody can testify. I'm not the only one feeling him. Everybody feels him. Michael is a good boy. And since he left so early, he's going to be celebrated for as long as this world is still standing. So she said with you, uh, this by and I said that you're a beneficiary to this. I want you to move on. I want you to forge on. He has it. Michael feel that there's nothing you cannot do. There's nothing you cannot achieve. He will tell you, don't let anybody tell you that there's a dream that is too big or a dream that is bigger than you, for you that you cannot achieve. That if you focus on it, you will attain it. You will do it.